Let's quickly chant the Mangala Charan prayers together and then we'll get started. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Nama Om Vishnupadaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Devam Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshetarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna. So we welcome all of you to this ongoing seminar for close to six or seven days on the life and teachings of various Vaishnavacharyas. So yesterday we covered the life and the pastimes of Bhishma Dev because we were celebrating Bhishma Ashtami. And today we are celebrating according to the Vaishnav calendar the disappearance day of yes it's not reaching me <laughs> madhvacharya yes we are celebrating the disappearance day of madhvacharya we would be celebrating the disappearance of ramanujacharya tomorrow so we would have a class on his life as well tomorrow night <laughs> Any idea who Ramanujacharya is? I'm sorry, Madhvacharya is? Can we share some, something that we have heard of Madhvacharya before? Anything that comes to your mind as soon as you hear the word Madhvacharya? Yes. Born in Udupi. Born in Udupi. He appeared in the beautiful place of Udupi in South India. Yes. What else? You could speak anything. Yes. Okay, I could be totally wrong. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 He was, was the guru of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Not direct guru, but yes. yes. That is Madhavendra Puri. Very, very similar. Madhvacharya, Madhavendra Puri. But yes, in the same line. Any wrong answers? I'm just getting the right answers. I'm waiting for a wrong answer. Yes. Madhvacharya is very powerful. He is very powerful. I don't know that we have to see as the class unfolds. Yes. Is he the founder of Dvaita? Yes. He is the founder of the Dvaita philosophy. Um, is the board uh, fine for you? Or maybe you want to sit here? Is that... Okay. If you're comfortable, I have no problem. <laughs> yes, uh, you were saying something. Madhva. Yeah, I was just wondering if Madhva is as in middle. Madhya. Okay. Okay. Remind me to discuss the meaning of the word also, just in case I forget. It's your responsibility. So, Prabhu, you have to remind me of the identity of Madhvacharya. You have to remind me of the meaning of the word Madhvacharya. You have to remind me of the philosophy, Dvaita. And what are the other answers? You said something. 
Udupi. So you have to remind me of speaking about Udupi. In short, this is going to be an interactive discussion where we all speak and we discuss about this great personality. Any idea why we distributed the Bhagavad Gita books? <laughs> How is that related to our discussion? What's that, Krishna? Okay, you're very close actually. You have to just decode. That's too general. We are distributing, we've given Bhagavad Gita and the topic of discussion is Madhvacharya. Perfect, perfect. So can we all go to that page? That's the start of this discussion. That's the... So that's the last page of the introduction, just before chapter one. So it reads, are we all on the same page? 34 in the old book. Yes, 34 for me as well. 30 for the new one. So 34 for the old book and 30 for the new one. Okay. So now the, the page reads, the disciplic succession, evam parampara praptam imam rajar shayo viduhu, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 2. Srila Prabhupada says, this Bhagavad Gita as it is, is received through this disciplic succession. So let's read one name at a time. Who's going to start? We start from, yes, start. Krishna. Krishna. The next name? Brahma. Brahma. Third? Narada. Narada. Fourth? Vyasa. Okay. <laughs> Who's after Vyasa? Madhva. Madhva. There's the line. Okay. That's Madhva. Not to be confused with the eighth name, which is Madhava. Yes. This is Madhvacharya and not Madhvacharya. Madhva is another name of Krishna. And the meaning Madhva has a specific uh, the word Madhva has a specific meaning. In Sanskrit, the word Madhu means different things. What does Madhu mean generally? Honey. Honey or sweetness. It also means bliss, hmm? happiness. And the word Dha means knowledge. So Madhva is Madhu plus Va, which means he who's an embodiment of bliss and knowledge. Madhva. So therefore he is Madhvacharya. That personality who is an abode of blissful knowledge and who propagated the, the principles of the Bhagavad Gita. So therefore he is an Acharya. Okay. So now coming down this line at number 5 is Madhvacharya. So we go down to Padma Nabha, Narahari, Madhava, Akshobhya, Jayatirtha, Jnana Sindhu, Dayanidhi, Vidyanidhi, Rajendra, Jayadharma, Purushottama, Brahmanya Tirtha, Vyasa Tirtha, Lakshmipati Tirtha, Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri, and Lord Chaitanya. So, do we see this line? Coming originating from Krishna, where the first guru is Brahma, the middle guru is Madhva, and finally it's Sri Chaitanya. And then comes down Sri Chaitanya through the six Goswamis. So, therefore, what is our line called as? What is this successive? This, this disciplic succession line called as? Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Parampara or Sampradaya. Gaudiya means refers to the era of Gauranga. Hmm? Gaudiya. So, so that was the purpose of why we gave the Bhagavad Gita so that we know the person we are trying to discuss is a main prominent Acharya in our line or our Sampradaya. So now there are four main sampradayas. Have you all heard of this? There are four main Vaishnav paramparas or sampradayas. Authentic, authorized, bona fide Vaishnav sampradayas. Have you all heard of this? No? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives a very beautiful example. He says it's like the well. The material world is described or is, is indicated by a dark, deep well. And there are four ropes put into this well. 
and you can catch hold of any of these ropes and you can come out. So these four authentic Vaishnava Sampradayas are considered like the four ropes, while we are considered to be inside the well of material existence. Now what are those four Vaishnava Sampradayas? They all start from Krishna, therefore they are authentic. Srila Prabhupada used to say in his classes, we may not be perfect, but the message that we are giving is perfect because it comes from the perfect person, Sri Krishna. Yes? So what are these four paramparas? One is called a Shri Sampradaya. The second is called Rudra Sampradaya. The third is called Brahma Sampradaya. And the fourth is called Kumara Sampradaya. So Shri means Lakshmi. Rudra means Shiva. Brahma is as it is. And Kumara Sampradaya, four Kumaras. What does this mean? It originates from Krishna, but the personality through whom the Sampradaya flows down are these personalities. So the Sri Sampradaya flows through Lakshmi Devi. The Rudra Sampradaya flows through Lord Shiva. The Brahma Sampradaya comes down through Brahma. And finally, the Kumara Sampradaya comes down the four Kumaras. And in each of these lines, there is a powerful, empowered representative who gets this philosophy according to time, place, and circumstance. So the Sampradaya, starting from Lakshmi, the empowered personality who got down that philosophy and propagated it to the general mass was Ramanuja Acharya. The personality who came in the Rudra line and the empowered personality who spread the message of Vaishnav Sam philosophy was Vishnu Swami. The personality who came in the Kumara Sampradaya coming down was Nimbar Acharya. And finally, in the Brahma line was Madhvacharya. And because we come in the Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Sampradaya, for us, the prominent Acharya is Madhvacharya. Make sense? So that's the reason this, signif this, this discussion becomes more significant. So we discussed about the name, and we discussed about who Madhvacharya is. And of course, in the line that we read, we found out how down from Madhvacharya, many names, many generations, comes down to Madhavendra Puri, as you said, Madhavendra Puri, whose disciple, prominent disciple is Ishwara Puri, and whose disciple is Lord Chaitanya. Therefore, we are called as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, because we are followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But ultimately, our line is called as Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Parampara. Very interestingly, <coughs> In the purports of Madhvacharya to the Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 14, which is Brahma Vimohan Leela, which is the pastime where Lord Brahma got bewildered. Are we all acquainted with that story? Where Lord Brahma comes to Vrindavan and he steals Krishna's cows, calves, and friends, thinking, what is this child going to do? Is he whom they call as God? I don't think so. He eats food from his friends. We are not supposed to offer to Krishna something that we smelt or we tasted. And here are friends of Krishna and Vrindavan tasting it and removing it from their mouth and giving it to Krishna and Krishna is tasting it out of sweet love. So Brahma got bewildered. And then Krishna, I mean, chapter 13 and then chapter 14, Brahma offers prayers. Uh, very famous, very beautiful prayers also in the 10th canto. Interestingly, in Madhvacharya's commentary, chapter 13 and chapter 14, there are no commentary. There is no, there is no commentary, there are no purports. So one disciple of Srila Prabhupada asked Prabhupada that Madhvacharya is a great Acharya in our line, but he has given no commentary to chapter 13 and 14. He is given to up to 12, the 10th canto, and then he goes from after Brahma Vimohan Leela. So why? So Srila Prabhupada smiled and he said, Ultimately, for Madhvacharya, Brahma is Guru. And he can never explain through his commentary how his Guru was bewildered. <laughs> Interesting. Therefore, if you see even in the transcendental pastimes of Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada exactly left this world while he was giving the commentary of the 14th chapter of the 10th canto. <laughs> one disciple of Srila Prabhupada was explaining in Vrindavan. Similarly, one time Prabhupada was on a morning walk. And one personality who was very learned 
in the commentaries of Madhvacharya on the Bhagavad Gita, he came to Srila Prabhupada and he said, you have given this Bhagavad Gita as it is, but I don't see that to be very unique. It's very, very similar to the commentary of Madhvacharya. It seems as if it's the same commentary of Madhvacharya. I can see Madhvacharya in your commentary. That's what he said. Now, if it would have been some other mundane author, they would have got really angry because now, well, I put in so much of effort and you were seeing somebody else in that. Srila Prabhupada smiled and he said, if you can see Madhvacharya in my commentaries, my effort is a success because I'm representing the line in an authentic manner. So in this way, the line of Madhvacharya comes down to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As Prabhuji explained, he was the one who gave the Dvaita Vad. What does Vad mean? Philosophy. Just like we say Maya Vad. <coughs> vad means philosophy. And Dvaita, what does Dvaita mean? Hmm? Double or dual. Dual nature. There's a very great personality in our Panchatattva called Advaita. It is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrit. He is non-different than God himself. Therefore, he is non-dual. Advaita. Or the other meaning is, he is one without a second. Non-dual. So, it was Madhvacharya who gave the, the idea or the, the commentary or this philosophy of Dvaita. What does that mean? What do you think is Dvaita? You can, you can feel free. Perfect. Perfect. During that time, the, the, uh, the knowledge of the philosophy which was very prevalent was that of Shankaracharya. And if you know, that is Advaita, where he says, the Jiva and God are non-different. Aham Brahmasmi, I am God, Tattvamasi, you are that, Soham, I am that, you are God, I am God, we are all God. <laughs> and it was Madhvacharya who came and said, this is bogus. And he was very powerful, he could challenge this philosophy. Actually speaking, Prabhupada explains in one purport that Shankaracharya is a very great Acharya, very respectable. Because he is a plenary incarnation of Shiva himself. Very respectable, great personality. But he came and on purpose, he gave a bogus philosophy. Filled with word jugglery. Why he did that is another story and another discussion. In the Padma Puran, there is a discussion between Vishnu and, <coughs> excuse me, Vishnu and Shiva. Where Lord Vishnu tells Shiva that you have to come down as a Brahmin boy by the name Shankara. And you have to give a bogus philosophy on purpose to keep the demoniac people away from the mainstream scriptures. Those who want to become God will be allured by your philosophy. And that's like a filtering process from the mainstream scripture. So Shankaracharya comes down. He's a very powerful Acharya, pure devotee, but he on purpose gives a bogus philosophy. So it was Madhvacharya who fought against it. And he said, no, Dvaita. The living entity and the Supreme Lord can never be the same. They are two different people, two different entities. You can never merge into God. There was one personality who came to Prabhupada. And he knew Prabhupada was very, very much strict against impersonalism or Mayavad. So he came and told Prabhupada, Prabhupada, how do we understand this? You say that when you get liberated, you cannot or don't merge with God. But my logic tells me the rivers that flow down, they merge into the ocean and they become the ocean. Isn't that what the truth is? Srila Prabhupada smiled and he said, good attempt. But even better than becoming a river is to become the fish. It is in the water but maintains its identity. So true liberation is not to merge with God and become God, but to attain the platform of liberated state from material existence, but still maintain our individuality of being the servant of God. And this is what 
Madhvacharya gave. He spoke about Dvaitavad strictly. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur describes, he took two principles each from all the sampradayas. He took two principles from Ramanujacharya, two principles from Vishnu Swami, two principles from Madhvacharya, and two principles from Nimbarkacharya to make the tenets or the principles of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And two principles that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took from Madhvacharya is that one, fight Mayavad, which we already discussed. And second, that the deity and the Supreme Lord are non different. Madhvacharya has a very famous deity in India. Which is that deity anybody knows? Gopal, yes. Bal Gopal, baby Gopal. That was installed by Madhvacharya. And even now worshipped with so much of devotion by his followers. And what's the name of that deity? Udupi Krishna, Jai. <laughs> the person behind the curtain is explaining about the person who's actually behind the curtain, that is Krishna. <laughs> Very nice. So, in this way, he gave uh, Dvaitavad. It's in Udupi, Karnataka. Hmm? And that deity is called as Udupi Krishna. We'll speak about it as time unfolds. So, Madhvacharya appeared roughly around 700 and 70 years ago, 7, 57, 70 years ago. And he appeared to a personality by the name Narayana Bhatta. And the way in the manner in which he appeared was also mysterious. Narayana Bhatta had two sons and both died immediately after birth. So Narayana Bhatta and his wife, for 12 years, they did this vrat, this tapasya of just sipping milk. If we have to follow one Pandav Nirjal Ekadashi, we stop all our services one week before <laughs> and we resume our services one week later. One week before Pandav Nirjal, we start giving excuses. Well, next week is Pandav Nirjal, so I won't be able to do this service. And one week after, oh, I'm still tired after that Pandav Nirjal. And we walk around telling everyone, oh, aren't you fasting? Oh, I'm fasting. Not even water. Not even a drop of water. It is said good things should be done in such a way that even you forget that you're doing it. Very secret. It should be kept like camphor. If you keep it in the open, the smell is gone. <laughs> so similarly, um, the, the parents, uh, Narayan Bhatta and his wife, they did this vrat for 12 years just sipping milk at a temple called Ananteshwar where the presiding deity is Anantadev or Balaram. And they prayed to him, we need a son who's a pure devotee. And after 12 years of tapasya, it is believed that Lord Balaram, he instructed Vayudev to enter the womb of the wife of Narayan Bhatta. Who's Vayudev, by the way? Wind, the demigod in charge of wind. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur quotes with proofs that Vayudev appeared in three yugas in different forms. In Treta Yuga, he appeared as Hanuman. And all the, all the representations or avatars or um, incarnations, so to speak, of Vayu are very strong because Vayu in himself is very strong. So in Treta Yuga, he appeared as the very powerful Hanuman. In Dwapar Yuga, he appeared as the very powerful Bhima. And in Kali Yuga, he appeared as the very powerful Madhvacharya. There are many personalities who just come in different forms in different Yugas. And it is shocking when we get to know the link. Like for example, the, the Prahlad in Sati Yuga. Are you all excited to know who he was in Treta Yuga? Yes? Okay. The Prahlad in Satya Yuga was Angad in Treta Yuga. Angad? You know Angad in Ramayana? Yeah, the son of Vali. He was Prahlad. Prahlad in Satya Yuga becomes Angad in Treta Yuga. He becomes Uddhava in Dwapar Yuga. And he becomes the great Tukaram in Kali Yuga. 
the saint from Maharashtra, western part of India. <laughs> so the great souls keep coming like that. So Vayudev in Treta Yuga came as Hanuman, then Bhima in Dwapar, and Madhvacharya in Kali Yuga. And Yes, there are pastimes, but unfortunately they are beyond the scope of today's discussion. <laughs> we'll have it at another point. And there is a very famous story of the tail also. Interesting story of how Hanuman smashes Bhima's pride. Anyway, so he appeared as Madhvacharya. And, oh, by the way, there's something very interesting here. Can you all read this? The snake seeds different lessons from stick to marriage. Does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. But it'll make sense in another 10 minutes. So when Madhvacharya was a young child, there was a very ferocious snake which approached him and literally attacked him. And he was just barely crawling. And nobody knew he's the son of, or, or he's the incarnation of Vayu himself and how powerful he is. Nobody knew. This was the first demonstration of his strength as an infant. So he was crawling and there was a very big, black, thick, venomous, dangerous cobra snake which was attacking <coughs> Madhva. And Madhva with his leg crushed the face of the serpent or the snake on a rock. And that imprint of that snake on the rock is still there. Near the house of Madhvacharya, near Udupi. Devotees, when they go to visit the house of Madhvacharya, even now there's a big stone with that imprint of that snake. And they say the story there, that when Madhvacharya was a young child, he smashed and there's the imprint of the snake on the rock. Then Madhvacharya started growing up, and one day his father, Narayana Bhatta, was very depressed. Why was he depressed? Because he was very poor. Pious, pure-hearted, effulgent Brahmin, but very poor. So he had taken a lot of loans from different people, and he had given deadlines that I would come and you know, give your money back. One moneylender came to his house, and he threatened him. He said, if I'm not gonna get the money today, I'm not leaving. This house would be my property then. So Narayan Bhatta was, you know, he didn't know what to do. And this young Madhva, whose childhood name was Vasudev, he was given the name Madhva later because he was self-effulgent with knowledge. But initially he was called Vasudev. So this young Vasudev came running and he said, Father, what happened? Why are you crying and why are you devastated like this? And he was six years old. So the father said, well, this is the thing. The money lender is asking for money. I don't have money. What to do? Vasudev said, that's it? I can arrange for it. There's no problem. His father smiled and he said, such an innocent boy. He doesn't know the reality of life. Where are you going to arrange money from? And Vasudev just runs in the backyard and there's a tamarind tree. Get some seeds, tamarind seeds gets it in his palm and gives it to the money lender. He said, take it. He said, what, what are you giving me? He said, hold it. Tamarind seeds, hold, hold them. He said, I don't want this, I want the money. He said, have patience and hold this. So he just accepted. And as soon as he put faith in the words of this young Vasudev and accepted the tamarind seed, every seed transformed into a gold coin. And he looked at the child, and the child looked at him, and he said, is it done? Did you get all your money back? Now leave. This is when he was six years old. Then he started growing up. It is believed that he was sent for learning to a Gurukul teacher. And all the students used to be very quiet and very attentive and very obedient. And here was this young Vasudev running around the whole Gurukul, making noise, making sounds, and not being attentive. So his teacher caught hold of him and he said, your father is such a virtuous Brahmana. He sent you with so much of faith that you're going to become a very stalwart scholar. Look at you, how naughty you are. Vasudev said, me and naughty? No, I'm not. I'm very attentive to every single word that you said. He said, no, 
You never attend classes. You're just running around. You're just playing in the fields. Vasudev said, you don't trust me, O teacher? I can prove it to you. And then from sunrise to sunset, Vasudev narrated word by word, sentence by sentence, every single lesson that the teacher taught and would teach in the future. And then he asked the teacher, are you satisfied? Now can I play? The teacher said, now you don't need this Gurukul, go. You know everything. There's a similar instance in the life of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when he used to attend school, he was such a, such, such a brilliant scholar that he never attended any of these classes and he never paid attention because they were all atheists. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was of the mindset that if I hear a word from the lips of an atheist, my bhakti for Gauranga would decrease. So I'm not going to listen to any of their words. He used to sit in their class and read Narottam Das Thakur's Prarthana book and Prem Bhakti Chandrika. So one time the teacher caught young Bhakti Siddhanta. said, get up, you're never attentive. Bhakti Siddhanta put the book down. He said, attentive to what? The thing that you teach? That's not even knowledge. <laughs> He said, true knowledge is identifying and distinguishing spirit from matter. And what you're teaching is all ignorance. The teacher said, no, but I still have to teach this and you're not attentive. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, with the spirit of fighting the atheists, he spoke every single philosophical point that the teachers made and also said, ahead, you're going to say the following. And the teacher was shocked, jaw dropping. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, are you now satisfied? Would you let me peacefully read this book and never disturb me again? I'm doing a favor on you by sitting in your class. You do a favor on me by letting me study. So in this way, Madhvacharya was also like that. And even when he was trying to be, the teacher tried to admonish him all in vain. So, this represents the snake story. This represents the tamarind seed story. This represents the lessons that the teacher asked and then Madhva gave all the lessons back. And the numbers give the age at which this happened. So the snake story was when he was an infant, close to zero years old. The seed story was when he was six years old. The lesson story was when he was eight years old. Now what's the from stick to marriage? Very interesting. After the teacher sent him from Gurukul, you go, you know everything, go home. Madhvacharya came home, the young Vasudev, and he told his father, he had a stick in his hand, a small stick. And he told his father, there's so much of Advaita going on. There's so much of impersonalism going on. I feel like becoming a world scholar, a preacher, and teaching everyone the philosophy of dualism. Dvaita, I feel like actually giving the message of Vaishnavism to anyone and everyone. I feel like doing this and breaking the teeth of Mayavad. His father smiled and he knew that he, <laughs> mother was 10 years old and Shankaracharya's philosophy was everywhere. It was universal. So his father smiled and told him, if this stick can manifest itself into a tree, you can become a world preacher and defeat Mayavad. Which means the, tr the, st the stick is never gonna transform itself into a tree, so you're never gonna become a world preacher. You're never, you can never break Mayavad, the teeth of Mayavad. Madhvacharya said, oh, is it that simple? The stick has to become a tree, no problem. He broke the stick into three portions and put it into three different places under the soil, and there were three trees which came up <laughs> by the power of Madhvacharya. And he told his father, you asked for one, I'm giving you three. And his father knew now, oh my God, that means he's gonna become a world preacher and he's gonna break the teeth of Mayavad, which indicates very soon he's gonna take, san very soon he's gonna take sannyas, because you never preach extensively without taking sannyas. 
So like in the story of Raghunath Das Goswami that we discussed the other day, what did his parents plan as soon as they got to know that he was getting renounced? See? It's in the air. <laughs> it's in the air. So from the stick story, his father tried to get him to uh, get him married. So this line is actually an easier way to remember all his childhood pastimes, at least the prominent ones. Can anyone just help me one by one? What does the snake represent? Which story is that? Yes, against the rock, and he was, he was almost an infant. What does the seeds represent? Anybody else? Sorry? And what seeds were they? Tamarind seeds, yes. At the age of eight, what were the lessons? Somebody else. <laughs> We practice the spirit of equality. <laughs> yes. The lessons that? He was very naughty and he was running around. So what did his teacher tell him? That you're not paying attention. And in return, he gave all the lessons back to his teacher. Yes, now you can go with the stick story. Ah. Yes, and it became a tree. So his father challenged him. Oh, you're going to defeat Shankaracharya's philosophy? Well, if the stick in your hand can become a tree, then you can defeat Shankaracharya's philosophy. As if, you know, that's... And here is Madhvacharya. Simple, that easy. And then he shows his father. So then his father tries to get him married. And as soon as Madhvacharya gets to know that he's going to get married, what did he do? Seems like we are all acquainted. What has to be done when the wedding bells are ringing? <laughs> so he ran away. He ran away from home. And he went to a personality by the name Achyuta Preksha. From here, we come here. He came to a personality by the name Achyuta Preksha. And he learnt under him. He took Achyuta Preksha as his teacher, learnt under him. And at the age of 12, what happened? He took sannyas at the age of 12. I'll tell you something very interesting. Those in the line of Madhva, right? The Madhva Sampradaya. Even now, the Udupi temple, the heads and the sannyasis, they all take sannyas when they are in single digits. Nine years old. Maximum 15 years old, 16 years old. Before they touch puberty, they take sannyas. <laughs> they take the right decision <laughs> even before the junction of decision comes in. And the present head of the mutt, Pejavar Swami, the Udupi mutt, very famous and very great personality. He would probably be in his 80s or 90s at the moment. And he took sannyas when he was 7 years old. He has maintained the vows of sannyas for over 75 years in his life. And recently, some of our ISKCON leaders, when they went for yatra to Udupi, they met with Pejavar Swami. And Pejavar Swami spoke one hour on the glories of Srila Prabhupada. He said, Srila Prabhupada did something which nobody in the past can, did, nobody in the present is doing, and nobody in the future can. He said, according to their sampradaya, the scriptures and the words of Madhvacharya, Madhvacharya had predicted that I am getting Krishna Bhakti to this world, but very soon in the age, in the, in the, in the era of Kali Yuga, there will be a great personality who in the spirit of the soldier, a commander-in-chief, a, a very empowered personality in the hands of Sri Krishna would spread the path of pure devotion at the lotus feet of Krishna to every town and village in this whole world. And Pejavar Swami was saying, we are so happy and grateful that the disciples of that great soul are here with us today. I remember that class of Pejavar Swami where he said, Krishna works against, so gravity works in a different way, Krishna works in the other. 
So nobody understood when he said that. And then he smiled and he said, gravity works as follows. Anything that goes up, it pulls it down. And Krishna's mercy goes the other way. Anybody who falls, Krishna uplifts. <laughs> so everybody clapped. So in that way, um, ISKCON have a very nice connection and very nice relationship with the followers of Madhvacharya. But very interestingly, Madhvacharya was given Mayavad, Ekadanda Sanyas, not the Three Danda Sanyas. What is the difference between Ekadanda Sanyas and Three Danda Sanyas? Just shoot an arrow in, in midair. Uh, yes. Yes. And what does Ekadanda mean? One. Eka means one and Danda means a stick. So what does that represent? Dan it is a punishment. Danda, punishment. So Eka Danda, Eka, Danda means two things. One is the stick and it also means a punishment. So the stick represents a principle. So Eka Danda in Mayavad means I am as good as God. So there's oneness between both of us. After sannyas, you become God. That's Ekadanda. Therefore, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took Ekadanda sannyas, Nityananda Prabhu broke it into three parts. Eh, one, oneness doesn't make sense. <laughs> you don't need a danda. <laughs> he broke it and threw it into the, uh, into the river. We were very fortunate to be to that place when we were young. That place is even now called as Danda Bhanga Lila Bhumi. The place where the, the staff of Gauranga was broken. Anyway, so that's Eka Danda. And three Danda, the Vaishnav Danda has three lines, three sticks. One represents the mind, the second represents the body, and the third represents words. Body, mind, and words. What does that signify? Surrendering to Krishna through body, mind, and words. So sometimes I say, who says that a sannyasi doesn't have a BMW? The actual BMW means surrendering to Krishna through body, mind, and words. <laughs> this, every sannyasi comes with this BMW. <laughs> the three danda, body, mind, and words. Yes? So very interestingly, Madhvacharya took ekadanda sannyas from Achyuta Preksha and not a three danda sannyas. Achyuta Preksha took Ekadanda Sanyas from Pradnya Tirtha. And they were all Vaishnavas. Why did they take Ekadanda Mayavad Sanyas? The reason is, Shankaracharya, when he was leaving this world, his disciples asked him, what is your last instruction and what do you think is a threat to this instruction? So Shankaracharya gave the last instruction, studying Vedanta and realizing Brahman. And then finally he said, the threat to Mayavad is Pradnya Tirtha, because he's a Vaishnav. So you somehow have to make him a Mayavadi. Because he's very powerful and he's spreading Vaishnav philosophy against Mayavad. So you have to take care. But the followers of Shankaracharya became so sectarian and so dominating that they tried to convert Pradnya Tirtha from a Vaishnav to a Mayavadi. And when he didn't agree, they started setting huts on fire, started destroying books, started breaking the stuffs. And Pradnya Tirtha was running places for his life. And Achyuta Preksha being his disciple was also with him. And they didn't know what to do. So both of them mutually decided, what we'll do is externally, just to save our lives, we'll act as Mayavadis. But internally, we'll be Vaishnavas. So therefore, to protect the life of Madhvacharya, externally he was given Mayavad Sanyas. So that you, were, you, know, you don't have any threat from any of the Mayavadis. You be a Vaishnav internally, but externally just to trick them, you have an Ekadanda. You know, if, if the demons think that they are smart, the Vaishnavas are smarter. Because we get our smartness from Krishna, who is the smartest. <laughs> Punyo Gandha Pritivyamcha Tejas Chasmin Vibhaga Show. Krishna says, Buddhir Buddhir Matama Smi Tejas Tejas Svinamaham Balam Balavatam Chaham Kamaraga Vivarjitam Dharma Virutta Bhute Shukamo Smi Bharatarashiva. 
Krishna says, I am the strength of the strong. I am the effulgence of the effulgent. And most importantly, I am the intelligence of the intelligent. Buddhir buddhir matamasmi. So he was given Ekadanda Sanyas. And there are so many instances of his power potency where he went to Badrikashram. Madhvacharya went to Badrikashram to meet Vyasadev. And how is Vyasadev in Badrikashram? Have you all heard of the, the seven Chiranjeevis? Seven people who are eternal, beyond time and place. Have you heard? Okay. It is described that there are seven personalities who continue to exist till the end of Vaivaswata Manu's reign. They may not be seen through our vision, but they exist. And those who are qualified can also see them. Any guesses who are these seven Chiranjeevis who still exist? Vyasadeva one, intelligent. Yes, Vyasadeva. Um, he's beyond the consideration. So he also exists, but he's beyond. Ashwatthama is one. Markandeya? Markandeya Yes, but he is not considered as one of the Saptachiranjeevis because his lifespan is way more than the consideration. That's a long discussion. So Ashwatthama, who else? Hanuman, Vibhishan, who else? In fact, I myself, I always forget all the names. Uh, there's one place where, not here, another book. Anyway, so the consideration is one among them is Vyasadev. And even Madhvacharya is considered one because he's not different from Hanuman. So Madhvacharya traveled up to Badrikashram and met Vyasadev. And he was instructed personally by Vyasadev, the shik Siksha. Therefore, in our line, we find. Krishna, Brahma, Narada, Vyas, Madhva. Where did Madhvacharya meet Vyasadev? Because they were like ages apart. But it's in Siksha. Because both of them are Chiranjeevis and they could recognize each other. Mad Mad Madhvacharya went up to uh, Badrikashram and met with Vyasadev. And Vyasadev instructed Madhvacharya. It's there. It's on, it's on earth. North portion of India. Badrinath, Badri Vishal deity, very famous. Badrinath. So he went, and that's where he got Siksha. So although he got Diksha from Achyuta Preksha, he got Siksha from Vyasadeva, and that's more prominent because our line is a Siksha line. Therefore, in the Sampradaya, you find Vyasa and then Madhva. Right? Um, so these are the different pastimes. And then finally, with all these pastimes going on, we come to the main portion of the Udupi Krishna, how he came up with this deity, right? That he installed, that we spoke about. One time Madhvacharya, from the Ananteshwar temple, he was going to the ocean to take his bath. And he was composing songs and poetry about the Lord. And he was singing and he was chanting and going to the ocean, the sea. And at that point, there was a personality who came on the boat very interesting story to end the discussion. Please be attentive. So the boat came in and it got stuck at the mud on the shore and it couldn't move from there. It was just stuck. And there was so much of weight on the boat, it just couldn't move. So Madhvacharya asked him, what happened? And he said, my boat is stuck. Madhvacharya, because he's Vayu, he just waved his cloth. <laughs> he just waved his cloth. And by the intensity of that wind which was created, the boat was moved off the shore. And then that personality who was on the boat, he told Madhvacharya, as gift, you can take anything on the boat. So Madhvacharya took the ballast. You know the, what, what the ballast is? It's like a, a, a big rock which you put so that the boat doesn't tilt off and it's stable. And it was covered with chandan, gopi chandan. That which we apply here, just covered with Gopi Chandan. So Madhva said, this looks very interesting, I'll take this. And it was so heavy that even 35 men couldn't carry it. 
and madhva with one hand and the you know it is it is said that he was singing the praise of krishna with the with the big uh, gopi chandan block one hand the other on the hips so he was he was like relaxed <laughs> and he walked all the way back to the temple and on the way this broke the gopi chandan just came off it was a beautiful deity of krishna and this deity has a history in the previous yuga in dwapar yuga when krishna was ruling as the king in 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 dwarka devaki came to krishna and she said i just saw you as a baby as soon as you were born but i never saw your baby pastimes can you display your baby pastimes so krishna very quickly transformed and show displayed his baby pastimes very attractive and it just charmed the heart of devaki rukmini got to know that her husband had just played the vatsalya pastimes of a baby she came to krishna and she said can you enact those pastimes i want to see you as a baby now krishna was too embarrassed <laughs> krishna told rukmini well i am your husband i <laughs> just understand i <laughs> i mean i can stand with my cope in in front of my mother not in front of you <laughs> i cannot do that you know so it's not possible so therefore krishna he created out of his mental creation and imagination and depiction of his mind he created a very beautiful deity and this is the same deity and he gave it to rukmini and said you worship this deity this is non different from me and rukmini worshiped this deity for so many years and after krishna's time we know the story in the bhagavatam where they where arjuna he escorts all the queens in the bhagavatam there's the story of dwaraka so at that point he took the deity this deity also with him and just to protect and keep it safe he put it safe or preserved this deity in a place called as gopikund and that deity stayed there for 4500 years arjuna just forgot about it and then there was another man who was digging and he found this deity and then on and on and on and finally it came on to this person who was on the boat and madhva recovered this piece which was covered with gopi chandan therefore we call this gopi chandan because it originates from the original place called as gopikund in the spirit of the gopis pure love for krishna so then madhva charya took this and he spoke this katha to all his disciples about how this deity manifested installed this deity in udupi and started the worship taught all his disciples that the deity is non different from krishna in fact on this very auspicious day madhvacharya left his mortal body and it is described he was sitting at the same temple and he was describing about krishna with references from the aitareya upanishad and the demigods were there listening to the words emanating from the lotus lips of madhvacharya and in the presence of all the demigods and all the pure devotees with his mind body and words focused on the names forms qualities and pastimes of krishna the sun of madhvacharya's glory set in this mortal world and as the sun of madhvacharya's mortal pastimes set in this world the sun the glorious sun of madhvacharya's effulgence started rising in the spiritual world so this is the life the glory and the teachings of madhvacharya shila madhvacharya ki shila prabhu pad ki gaur premanande so i'm very grateful to all of you who came here and i'm sure this diagram or this board will help us remember all the discussion and all the points thank you so much hare krishna